Mobad's father is in big trouble. He has finally been exposed and at this point, everyone is suspecting him to know more than he's telling. Some people have even begun accusing him of killing his own son because right now, everything that this man is doing in the press is only working against him. So guys, as at the time of making this video, it was reported that Mobad's body has been exhumed that is dug out of the grave for autopsy and further investigation. So this happened as at the time I was making and filming this video. It was said that during the exhumation process, the police kept people at distance so that there would be no distraction and there would be no crowd surrounding them. There were police tapes all around the area before um, his body was eventually exhumed. This means that this case is only just starting like it's about to get bad it's about to get better even because right now all the answers that we need all the answers to the questions we've all been asking would be answered an autopsy would be done and this is where we would now know what truly really happened to mobad now there have been claims that um, people saw blood in the casket after mobad's body had been removed suggesting that he was buried alive now this is just sparking up a controversy and a lot of people have their opinions what i can say about it is that usually when someone is deceased their body still emanates fluid and that usually mostly happens if the person wasn't embalmed now it's clear that mobad wasn't embalmed because we know he was buried so fast and embalming takes days if not um, weeks for it to to be done although it can be done very fast but for the case of mobad i don't believe or there's no reason to believe that he was embalmed which meant that blood was not drained out of his body nor nor was any of his bodily fluid drained out of him so it is very likely that the reason why there are bodily fluids in the casket after his body was removed was because he wasn't embalmed initially we all thought and we all agreed that mobad was buried too quickly despite not being muslim and despite not dying from a very contagious disease regardless of the fact that he's a father and a husband we all thought his burial was too quick and too rushed for such a person given the circumstances surrounding the controversy of his death but it turns out that his father actually had plans of burying him earlier than we complained of like we are busy complaining that this guy was buried too quick whereas there were plans to bury him a lot earlier than he was actually buried. Mobad died on the 12th of September 2023, somewhere in the evening where it was um, announced and it became uh, popular news on the internet. And he was buried the next day, the 13th of September 2023, towards evening in Ikorodu, in a land that they said belonged to him. And when his burial was going on, which everyone thought was a rush, people did not even have time to attend. But it so turned out that this man, Mobad's father, actually had the idea, even had planned, to bury Mobad midnight of the same day he died. That is midnight on the 12th of September, barely eight hours after this young man was said to have died from an unknown and undisclosed cause. The Bali of Ikorodu, a known man in the community, who is also the leader of the Landlord Association, according to what's being said, was the one that told people in an interview that Mobad's father, Mr. Joseph Aloba, reached out to him at night to tell him that his son, Mobad, had passed. The man said he knew of Mobad but did not exactly know him personally and that when the father reached out to him, he was, you know, trying to console the man when all of a sudden the man told him that they were bringing his body over for burial and they were planning on doing it in the midnight where everyone would not know, where mostly people would not have attended and we would not have even seen the entire process. Community leader, you don't want anything that will affect our community because of the side effects. And I'm saying it in English again. The father of this guy, Mubad, called me I don't know the time. I don't know that, I don't know that this, is what, this is what is going to happen. Called me at night, telling me that Mubad is dead. I felt so bad. I felt so sorry. Because I didn't know that boy. It's only the father that I knew. I don't, I've never met him before. I know that he's very, very charitable. He's giving money. When he gave his father card, the father celebrated it. I don't know him. I don't feel free for him. Now, suddenly, the father said that, they are bringing him to bury, they, they are bringing him, they want to bury him at that night. That as you assemble, as you get um, shoppers, jiggers, in order to bury him. And I said that this is not possible, man. It's not possible. Don't do that. I'm a community leader. How can you come and say that you want to bury your, your son at that time? I, I called him about two times and he said, you are bringing him. Immediately I saw 
some community members they brought one brought chauffeur one brought jigger a woman and a man i said what and this revelation has made things worse for mr joseph aloba this revelation this expose has made things really bad for him because priority now people are already looking at him with one eye but after this revelation everyone is looking at him everyone suspects him everyone believes he knows way more than what he's hiding he has been confronted many times although he has responded that the reason why he buried his son so early was because in their culture it is not good to keep a child after he has died especially when his both parents are alive and that is his claim even though a lot of people who share the same culture as him a lot of yoruba people have come out to call him out and say that is uh, bullshit and that is not true there are still people who believe that okay yes it is normal and it's also practical for a lot of parents to quickly bury their child however mobile is not just any child he was a celebrity he was a notable main and known person in the country he's a national treasure to some people and he's also a father and a husband and yet you wanted to bury him at midnight this only shows one thing that this man was trying to hide something and initially in my mind i thought maybe he did not know about the condition of his son in that casket but right now i feel like he knew and i think that that could be part of the things he was trying to hide there are now claims going around the internet that there is a chance mobad was buried alive because people are now pointing out certain absurdity in the video where mobad was lying supposedly dead at the back of a vehicle and his friend was crying that he was dead somewhere in the video mobad's body was said to have moved and jerked a little and people saw it i saw it and it was very clear that mobad was actually somewhat alive in that video he looked like life was still there and the mathematics a lot of people are doing right now is judging the circumstances that led to his death and the controversy surrounding him being buried so quickly he was injected and he collapsed and his own father was thinking of burying him barely six hours later and this has made people suspect that maybe the injection given to mobad was to keep him unconscious so that he would be buried alive was that what his father was trying to do was his father taking a chance was he trying to quickly rush this boy to be buried so that he would not have the chance to get up from the injection what are the possibilities that mobad is not in his grave right now struggling to crawl out and they made it so incredibly uncomfortable and impossible for him that even if he was to wake up in his grave with his neck bent it won't be long before he eventually doesn't get to wake up again these are a lot of theories people are putting out there that this man most likely buried his son alive especially given the fact that he was looking forward to burying him at midnight on the same day he died barely six hours apart and that is not even the worst of all because with him it just keeps getting bad where the whole world is trying to hold the people suspected to have a hand in this boy's destruction responsible mr joseph aloba is out there defending the suspect everybody's holding naramali accountable for the role he played in destroying this boy's life everybody's holding samilari responsible some people are even calling out the nurse there are people even dragging the wife and saying she knows way more talking about doing dna testing for the child suspecting she did something to him because he found out that the child was not his everybody right now is a suspect and guess what mobad's father is doing he's going around defending everybody how can a man whose son died in an unusual circumstance open his mouth and say the people everyone is suspecting is not the one who did it then who did it sir since you know everything since you got your degrees and you are so intelligent that you know who did it and who did not do it an investigation has not been carried out people are basing their suspicion on the fact that your son while he was alive complained that these people were after his life with evidence and you stand there on the grave of your dead child to say that those people did not do anything that those people did not kill him he even went on to say that his son was stubborn that naramali was only showing seniority that naramali was only trying to correct him your son is dead and the one person your son accused of wanting to take his life is who you're defending is who you're standing up for is who you're out there making campaign and trying to clear his name even if naramali self has not even spoken up for himself to clear his own name you are the one doing his job for him not to add the accusation that people are making that naramali is the one behind mobad being buried quickly that naramali is the one who threatened mobad's father that naramali is the one who is most likely paying mobad's father to hurry up with the barrier and in an interview it was said that davido sent this man two million naira and when this man was asked how he used the money he claimed he used the money to buy caskets and he used the money for burial expenses which is very tricky because from what we are hearing 
the video only sent the money on the 13th. But this man actually had plans to bury his son on the midnight of 12th of September. So which meant that the casket that you're claiming you used Davido's money to buy, you had already bought it. And the burial expenses that you used Davido's money for, you already had plans for that. So who sponsored that initial burial that you were going to do at midnight? Because we know it's not Davido's money. Because that one was said to have come on the 13th, the next day. So which meant that for this man to have plans to bury his son on that same day midnight, he had already done the casket he had already prepared for the burial and he already paid probably had money for the grave diggers and everyone who was going to get involved so the burial for mobad had already been planned so this man is most likely lying when he claimed it was the two million naira that davido sent him that he used to buy the casket and for the burial because that one came the next day and you had plans the day before so who sponsored that because with the way this man is defending Samilari and Naramali, it is making people believe that Naramali has a hold on him. In the video that I saw where he was talking with Naramali with Mobad in the back, clearly he was most likely trying to speak for his son. That should have been at the time when they had issues and the father was trying to intervene for the son. And in that video, even though you cannot understand what is being spoken, you can understand the dynamics of power between Mobad's father and Naramali. In the entire video, Naramali is on the bed, filming this man visibly, while the man is standing up, begging and talking in soft tune. I don't know, but when it comes to the Yoruba culture, they are supposed to be the most respectful people. They are the most respectful people that I know when it comes to their tradition and when it comes to them associating or interacting with an elder, regardless of the financial status. The Yorubas will prostrate all the way to the ground. So why is it that when it came to Mobad's father, talking with Naramali, in which this man is obviously older than Naramali. Naramali is still on his bed, filming him while the man is standing. Like, it's so disrespectful. It's the most disrespectful thing you would ever see. I don't know This is something that you will know that Naramali does have a hold on this man. This is where you know that Naramali actually could possibly be the one pressing the remote of this man to bury his son. Because for you as an elderly Yoruba man to be standing and talking to a young boy like Naramali who is on his bed comfortably looking at you and filming you like you're coming to beg for money, then it's very clear that the power dynamics or the respect dynamics between Mobad's father and Naramali is uneven and the upper hand is on Naramali. So when people are talking about Naramali paid this man off or is threatening this man to discredit his son's debt or make it go away, it's very believable. Because this is a man that has called his son stubborn. This is a man that has made it seem as if his son has not done anything for him when he was alive. This is a man whose other siblings or family members have been thinking of ways to drag property from Mobad's wife. It's almost clear that for Mobad's father, Naramali obviously has power over him. Aside all of these atrocities that this man is throwing out there, aside all of this red flag that this man is putting out there, making him more guilty every single day, in the recent interview he had with the police where he was on the panel, Everybody's pointing out how his face looked when the police officer was talking about how they've gathered their team for investigation, how everyone would be investigated, how they would do an autopsy, get his body out of the grave, how they will, that no stone would be left unturned and every suspect would be looked into. People just kept looking at Mubad's father's face. His face was telling. His face was revealing. Everyone has analyzed his face that this man is somehow scared. Whatever he thought he was hiding would come out to life. Everyone is just looking at Mobad's father with both eyes at this point. Everyone is calling him out. Everyone believes that he knows way more. And to be very honest with you, he keeps giving out that there is so much more he knows. Because I've never seen a man who would lose a child and go out there to fully defend the people suspected of killing his child. Even the so-called nurse that most possibly injected your son with whatever may have killed him, you haven't said anything. You didn't even ask people to go after that. 
you were busy going after properties. I would like to know what this man knows. I won't be surprised if everything comes out and that there was something really sketchy and fishy about the death of Mubad. If there was some kind of substance that was injected in him, that substance would be eventually revealed. And if there was a chance that Mubad could have been saved because there's a video going around of a so-called eyewitness who was there the day Mubad was brought to the hospital. You must have heard the audio of the man talking about how he saw Mubad and Mubad was going in and all of a sudden, the nurses started running elter skelter and they did not know what to do and somehow somewhere he asked what was happening and that was when one of the nurses said they gave Mubad an injection and he collapsed and just few moments after that the friend that Mubad went into the hospital ward with runs out and is screaming Mubad is dead and in this man's point of view he is claiming that these nurses and these doctors did not actually try to help Mubad. So like I was saying, I was at the hospital that morning when Mubad arrived. He came with one guy, the same guy that his video was trending on social media that was shouting, Mubad is dead, Mubad is dead. And that's why I told you that that guy, he had a lot of questions to answer because he know a lot of things that Nigerians don't know. The same guy he came with, and he is the same guy that took him out of hospital. Now, I was at the hospital that morning when he arrived, and I even took a picture with him i will send you the picture i will send you the picture so when he came i was i was happy to see him i i requested if i can take a picture with him and he said no problem though i noticed he, he looked so down he was looking so uh, down that morning i was not happy initially because they gave me appointment uh, uh and i got there uh, i stayed there for almost an hour they told me that the doctor is not around so at the time i got angry and one of the nurse there came to like calm me down that the doctor will soon arrive so while we were talking mobad came in with the guy so i saw him and instantly i was lightened up and i was like ah mobad i used to listen to your song i'm one of your fans can i please take a picture with you and he said okay no problem so after taking this picture with him he went inside he went inside and i was sitting down at the reception there i was just looking at the picture then after 20 minutes after 15 to 20 minutes that he went inside so then noticing that they were just moving around a lot of confusion i couldn't understand i noticed that they were trying to make call they were trying to call some some people the nurses they were just walking around and something was not just right so i have to like stand up I needed to ask someone like what's going on because at the time I was even like ang like I was even like kind of afraid uh, if I'm safe there. So I have to like uh, I saw the nurse that was trying to like calm me down earlier. So I called her and I was like, ah, what happened? She whispered to my ear that they gave Mobad injection and he collapsed. So I was I was shocked. Mobad, I wanted to shout. Before I know, even the nurse that was because I wanted to like ask her, ah, what, what happened? Before I know, she left me. So I was kind of confused. In that confused state, I was just standing around. Before I know, before I know, before my own very eyes, this same guy that came with a, a Mobad a rushed him out of the out of the hospital, shirtless, out of the hospital, and the whole everything just happened. How did he die instantly after an injection? What was injected inside of him? Cement? In the audio, the man was so disappointed at the fact that these people did not even try to help him. That they did not try. That the moment Mubad collapsed, that was when they assumed or concluded that he had died. And before you know it, six hours later, his father is already talking about putting him in the ground. All these things is making this story way more complicated than it should ever be. It's looking like there is some kind of medical mishap that was done. It's looking like this nurse or the people who injected him with something know something or they were sent. It's also looking like the father knows or could it be that it's the hospital that is promising the man money to let it just die quickly because they know they will be in trouble. It's very possible that it could be the hospital and the owner of the clinic that is promising the man a lot of money if he just lets it die, if he just lets his son you know be buried and not make a big deal out of this because if they find out that Mobad's father is taking bribe or is aware that his son's death was mostly caused by somebody then he will be held accountable he will most likely be facing jail because he knows something he'll be an accomplice to murder if that's the case it's such a very unusual event everything we're seeing unfolding in this Mobad's case is so overwhelming everyone is speaking out everybody's a suspect even Mobad's wife right now is under fire especially with her child because people are pointing out that the child does not look like Mobad rather looks like Samilari and people have claimed that while Mobad was dating the girl 
she was most likely having affairs around with people and one of such people might be Sammy Larry. But I don't know what I think about that. I feel like if Sammy Larry ever had slept with Mobad's wife, for someone who wants to destroy Mobad, he would be the one to tell Mobad. It would be a popular news. He would announce it. It's not something he would want to keep to himself. It looked like something he would want to brag about and hurt Mobad. That is, if indeed he did anything with Mobad's wife. I feel like that would have come out and Sammy Larry would have used it to insult Moba because he clearly wanted to destroy this boy so badly. But then again, at this point, it's hard to let people off the hook. At this point, it's hard to defend anyone because right now, everyone is a suspect. Right now, it's hard not to see that even Moba's father might know something about the death of his son. But you guys, let me know what you think. Let me know your thoughts because this story is far from over. There's a whole chapter that is yet to unfold. I would like to see what the investigation come up with. I would like to see what would be done in terms of investigation. Meanwhile, it's being said that Naramali and Samilari are not in the country, which means that wherever they are, they have no intention of suffering the consequences of their role in destroying this boy's life. So I don't know how that will play out. How would the police investigate them if they are not in the country? I'm not going to lie, what happened to Mobad was really horrible, but we saw the signs when it comes to this Malian music record label. We saw the signs. How does a record label manager go to jail many times and get arrested by the NDLE for doing drugs? And we Nigerians were the ones who championed him, who protested that normally they released. We gave Naramali so much support and he turned out to be the devil. Created a label to sign young artists, young talented artists, only to end up turning them into junkies, only to end up turning them into drug addicts, only to end up turning them into versions of himself, only to end up turning them into drug pushers. Because I still feel that under all those Malian music thing, a lot of these people were dealing drugs. It's, it's, it seems like that is what is being proven. Maybe that was why Mobad wanted to leave. Maybe that was why Mobad did not want to continue. Adding to the fact that his deal was probably not favorable to him. Because just so you know, and as much as Mobad is going viral now and his songs are selling, it's very possible that a lot of the money is going to Naira Mali. It's very possible that all the songs that are doing well in Mobad's name right now in the charts, the money is going to Malian music. It's only most likely making Naramali richer. Hopefully, Mobad gets royalties from it, and hopefully those royalties goes to his family. And despite the fact that Naramali is under hot soup, people should collect Mobad's royalties first from him before they do whatever they want to do to him. So that's it, guys. But I want you guys' thoughts. I need you guys' opinion. So if you're watching this right now, comment your thoughts. What do you think about Mobad's father? defending Naramali and Samilari. What do you think about Mobad's father having the plans to actually bury his son earlier than we thought in the midnight of the same day he died? Do you think he's hiding something and what could he be hiding? Do you think he knows something about the death of his son? And also let me know your thoughts on Mobad's wife being suspected of not burying Mobad's son. People are saying that before money should be raised for Mobad's son, the DNA test should be done for the baby to confirm that it was indeed Mobad's own child, given how people are citing his resemblance to Samilari. Do you think it's rational? Do you think it's reasonable for people to ask this woman to undergo a DNA test before they can support her and the baby? Let me know your thoughts in the comment below. Please don't forget to like and share. Also, don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notification button so if there is a new video on this topic, you'll get notified. Thank you guys for watching.